So thank you for your prayers. We continue in our study uh, in the Psalms of Ascent, Psalm 120 through 134. We'll see how many we actually cover. Maybe it depends upon how long the war will be, but nonetheless. Uh, as we consider, this is one of the Psalms, Psalms of Ascent, this is one of the Psalms that actually talk about going up, uh, going up to Jerusalem, lifting our head up to the hills, etc. Uh, so we want to realize that it'll be speaking, I have the picture on the screen of the seven hills. Uh, where will my help come from? I lift my eyes to the hills. This is the hills he was referring to uh, in the psalm. Uh, we have a lot to read as we study the keeper of Israel, can keep Israel in you. Let's stand, if we will, get your stretch in. Let's read together in unison out loud from Psalm 121. Here we go. A song to the ascents. I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. From where shall my help come? My help comes from Adonai, who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Adonai is your keeper. Adonai is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not smite you by day. Adonai will keep you from all evil. He will keep your soul. Adonai will guard your going out, your coming in, from now and forever. Father, how thankful we are for the assurance of your word, uh, that our assurance is found in your faithfulness to Israel, even in fulfillment of uh, the promises of redemption that we enjoy in Messiah. And so together we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, we pray for the Prince of Peace to be made known. We pray as well that you might give the IDF decisive victory. Uh, we pray for the restoration of the hostages. Uh, we pray for the Gazan people. Our hearts break for them. We pray your protection over innocent civilians. We pray your blessing over uh, the Middle East in general, uh, that the name of our God and Savior would be exalted and be made known that there might be true message of salvation. We pray as well for Ukraine and other troubled spots in the world. And we pray that your blessing of peace might abide. We pray as well for our homes and our hearts, that the Prince of Peace uh, might be established in our souls, that we might not only uh, be uh, recipients of that peace, but instruments as peacemakers to others. So add your blessing to that end, that Yeshua would be glorified, lifted up, and magnified, for it's in his name we give thanks. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Please be seated, if you will. Uh, and so this is an unusual one of the Psalms. It's the only one uh, that actually is a little change uh, as it speaks about uh, with a Lamed in there, uh, to the ascents, not just of the ascents, about the ascents, but to the ascents. And so we're going to be learning not, uh, not only about the means to the ascents, but the security we have in the Lord to get there. Uh, the powerful help and security to ascend is provided in Yeshua, uh, who created and calls us to ascend to himself. He calls us to himself. Uh, we're not talking about a religion here. Uh, as a community, we don't care much about religion. Uh, we care about a relationship, what God cares about. And if you're, that's new for you, I want you to get your heads around the fact that God loves you and he wants you to come into a relationship with himself. And so we see this uh, in the calling of the scriptures. The whole Bible speaks of this very, very same truth as we ascend unto him. And so the premise uh, uh, for this particular psalm goes like this. Since all things were created by Messiah, John 1.3, so all things are kept by Messiah, Colossians 1.17. The eternal power of the creator of the universe is provided in Messiah's finished work for sins and proven by his mighty conquest over the grave. Yeshua, our resurrected Messiah, secures us. This is the testimony of scripture and what this psalm especially speaks of. Let's get down to the detail of it. Uh, the main, main idea, if you're a visitor here, this may all seem like nerdy stuff. Uh, so just wait till I start yelling in a couple of minutes. The main idea of this psalm is that his universal power for creation, verses 1 and 2, 
and this national promise to keep Israel, verse 3 through 4, is my eternal pledge of his care forever. What difference does it make? What difference does that make to my life? Well, here's the difference it makes. You may be wondering why you have fear and not faith. You may be wondering why you lack confidence and that somehow you default to conceit to feel good about yourself rather than having confidence in the Lord. That is because if there is no creator, there is no keeper, there will be no confidence. And we'll take a look at that with some detail in a moment or two. And so my confidence in the creative power through the Messiah also assures me of his keeping power through the Messiah. What he creates, he keeps. If he didn't create it, he ain't going to keep it. Uh, you know, uh, he's the author and finisher. What he authored, he finishes. If he didn't author it, you come up with some crazy ideas you're blaming God for, don't expect him to finish it. What he authored, he finishes. it. And anything my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. And so understand that this power is desperately needed in the world. This is what we have in our Messiah. And so for mountain climbers who ascend, those who ascend, you know, see where I'm coming from with mountain climbers. And so uh, they need the right gear to both secure and ascend. And so we ascend to Jerusalem, even uh, Jerusalem above, uh, the Zion of heaven. And so what's needed resource to secure us for our life journey. And I want to uh, guarantee you a few things. You don't need public opinion. Uh, for those who may have been counting on public opinion, or at least for the few friends or get a few likes on Facebook or whatever you're looking for, uh, that's vanity and there's no real help for you. And so you say, well, what do you mean? Well, with all the anti-Semitism going on, in the world, in our country, in our community, uh, how many of you saw uh, the uh, reels uh, that's on Facebook? Thank you, Neil, for putting that up uh, on Facebook as well as elsewhere. How many of you have seen that reel of the people stealing our signs? Raise your hand. Yeah, well, we've had about 30,000 views of people stealing our signs. We get to pray for people. I didn't know who to pray for until they stole the signs. Jews seek after signs. This is important. <laughs> And so understand, if we will, this whole matter. And so our resource, our equipment, is the truth about God's finished work in Messiah. Now, this is traditionally seen, I have up on the screen there, uh, from uh, uh, Midrash Rabbah of, of, of Psalms, but nonetheless uh, called Midrash Chakotov. This psalm alludes to Israel's ultimate victory in the time of the Messiah. This is what this psalm meant traditionally. We understand biblically. Uh, as I have on the right side of the screen, we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. In the Messiah, we are victorious. Outside the Messiah, if you abide in him, you bear much fruit. Apart from him, you can do what? Nice. Not much. Not much. So therefore, understand confidence to ascend isn't from having a lack of problems, but having sufficient resource and security through the problems. Because God has not called you to a battle-less existence, but to have victory. He called you to victory, to fight the good fight of faith, to press on to the mark of high calling. And so the assurance and all that we have in Messiah gives us what we need every single day to live out that victory in our homes, in our hearts, in our community, wherever God may have us. And so uh, if he's the creator, then he's the keeper. Let's understand We'll look at, Lord willing, this morning, uh, first of all, verse 1 and 2, as creator, he is your ability for your life. As faithful, he's the security in this life, verse 3 to 6. And then as eternal, he's the certainty of eternal life, verses 7 and 8. Let's get right into it, start at the top, work our way down. And so the first point, as creator, he's the ability, he's the resource uh, for this life. Whatever God has called you to do, wherever he called you to live, whatever it may be, he is what you need. He is your sufficiency to live the life he called you to live faithfully, victoriously. And so uh, we want to appreciate the fact that God is the creator, the originator of all things, uh, and so we, we think about the mountains here. What's the point of the mountains? I lift my eyes up to the hills, the mountains. 
from where shall my help come? He's going up to Jerusalem. All you see is mountains, uh, uh, Aliyah, go, going up. I'm making Aliyah, as we say in Yiddish, but nonetheless, an Aliyah, going up. That's what happens when you're on your way to Jerusalem, even as one day we'll go up to the heavenly Jerusalem. Uh, by the way, it's a free trip if you want to get on board. Just trust in Yeshua. And so the creation points to our help. And so going up to Jerusalem, you can't avoid the mountains. That's where Jerusalem is found. Uh, and therefore, they are not the help. They are reminders of the help, as we'll see in Psalm 125 as well. They're not our help, but the reminders of our help. You say, well, don't they protect us? Do not trust anything of creation. They are reminders of the protection that God gives us. Uh, everything around you, if it has any value, is a reminder of what God has done for you. In this fallen world, with its trials, wars, and hatred, uh, require the Creator's powerful ability for believers to live successfully at home and faithfully in the world. About a hundred or so years ago, there was a guy who got upset with his Model T Ford. Uh, it wasn't running right. He kicked it a few times. That didn't help. He yelled at it. Didn't make any difference. And all of a sudden, while he's yelling and kicking this poor machine, uh, a guy steps up to him and taps him on the shoulder and says, can I help you? Said, and the guy looks at him frustrated and says, what makes you think that you can help me with this crazy car? He says, my name's Henry Ford. I made the car. I can fix the car. God made this world. He can fix this world. God alone can fix this world. God invented marriage. Blame him. He can fix your marriage. God alone can fix your marriage. God is able to fix your marriage. So you can testify about him in your marriage. And so this is exactly what we're called to do as we live for him, whether it be home or anywhere else he calls us to be. And so he is Adonai, uh, the one who made heaven and earth, the maker of heaven and earth. And so this psalm once more found uh, uh, in uh, Midrash Takuma, uh, it says there, traditionally the rabbis wrote, the only trustworthy moral mountain is the Messiah, whom Zechariah calls the great mountain. And so all of it is a reminder of the greatness of our God. Um, Mount Everest is really a, a reminder of the greatness of our God. God is actually greater than the creation he brought about. And so the creator's power for our help. Uh, we ascend by his creation power. Uh, the mountain maker is our helper. It's the only place, only one who can help you with your life. You say, well, I have addictions. I have a porn addiction. Uh, I have a, you know, a, a drug addiction. Uh, I'm an alcoholic. I have an alcohol addiction. Uh, I have a Looney Tunes condition. I, I just need Bugs Bunny all the time. Whatever your addiction may be, God is the one who can deliver you from the domain of darkness and transfer you to the kingdom of his beloved son. If you'll only trust in the provision of God. The only difference between any person, whether they're trusting in the provision of God or not trusting in the provision of God, whatever your addiction may be, whatever your problem may be, God can make the difference. No belief in the Creator, no reminder, therefore, of His redemptive help, the very things that remind us to you, they're just a bunch of mountains. They're just a bunch of stars in the sky. No, they remind us of His greatest work, what He has provided in Messiah the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And so we want to understand here, the very calling we have is to recognize the reminders. And maybe your spouse is a reminder to you. Maybe your spouse is handpicked by God to be an encourager to you. You say, well, my spouse hasn't figured that out yet. Well, then you be an encourager to your spouse, uh, that they might get a hint of understanding these matters. And so you say, well, someone would say to me, you know, uh, agnostic, certainly, you mean he created the world, then why do we have these problems? Well, the problems come from sin, come from rebellion against God. Uh, the sin is the problem. This is what separates us from God and his help. Uh, and apart from Messiah and all that God has done in the Messiah, apart from the Messiah, there's nothing but misery in this world. That's what we see taking place, listen, in the promised land. The promised land. Why? Because of sin. That's what's going on. Because you have demonically uh, empowered uh, evil people wanting to kill babies and 
uh, and retirees and all sorts of things, all whacked out people there, demonically inspired to kill all these people. That's what, it's sin, that's what's going on. And maybe you're killing each other uh, with words, emotionally abusing one another, disrespecting one another, dishonoring one another, uh, being unkind to one another. That's the same sin, it's the same sin. And we all need the same resource that is the Messiah. For, the being, for those of us being saved, the cross is the power of God. That's what we need. And regarding the one who is the creator, it says, uh, Yeshua was in the world. The world was made through him. This is the mechanism of how God made everything. Yeshua is the creator. And the world did not know him. So you have to recognize where your help is. Uh, you need a reminder, certainly, but you need to recognize where your help is in Yeshua, in his sacrifice. This is God's powerful, singular, and all-sufficient help for your life and my life together here. And so I'm going to take a moment, if I will, uh, to speak about God as our creator. If you don't believe that he is the creator, then you can't receive his help. Understand this whole psalm and all the word of God. Uh, depends on the fact that you believe in the creator of this universe, uh, that it came about because of God. Uh, it didn't come about because of evolution. It came about because of God. Uh, God is the creator. If you don't believe that, you can't have his help. His help is based on him as the creator. That's what the psalmist is saying to us here. And so I'm going to take some time to explain it. On the left side of your screen... I have science points us to the creator. Let's focus on the left side for a moment. I know you rebellious people are therefore sneaking looks to the right just because you're so rebellious. But on the left side of the screen, I have a simple, simple formula. All things, here's a simple tr truth, all things that begin have a cause. All things that, if, there, if something has a beginning, something caused the beginning. And therefore, the universe, which is expanding, we realize it had a beginning because of what science has found out uh, over the last 40 years, that the universe is expanding. It had a beginning. It had a beginning. Uh, and so, therefore, the universe has a cause. We believe in the cause. We believe in the causeless cause. We believe in the God of creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens. We believe in that God, the God of the scripture, the God who created everything. You're saying the Big Bang? Well, let me tell you where the Big Bang came from. A big God. But um, there is a guy I have up on the screen there, Fred Hoyle, Sir Fred Hoyle, a famous English astronomer, he's, he, he's, he died. Uh, he was an agnostic, hated religion. He believed in the steady state theory for the universe. In other words, it always was, always will be. Had no beginning, it always was, always will be. That, that, that has died out, no one believes that anymore because science has realized that it's expanding, it had a beginning. Uh, and it, and, but he hated the idea. And he was being interviewed uh, because he hated the idea of, uh, of, of the fact that they have expanding the universe that began. And so he said, the big, big, he came up with the phrase, the Big Bang. He's an agnostic. He came up with it because he was mocking the idea. He hated the idea. You know why he hated the idea? Because he said the Big Bang Theory requires a recent origin of the universe that openly invites the concept of creation. He hated it because you had to come up with the idea of a creator. And he didn't believe in the creator. And therefore, he mocked it by calling it the Big Bang Theory. Another guy, Henry Schaefer, professor down in Georgia, Professor of Chemistry, world famous, uh, computational theorist, theoretical uh, uh, chemist, most highly cited chemist in the world. This is what he said. A creator must exist. The Big Bang ripples and subsequent scientific findings are clearly pointing to a, a ex nihilo creation consistent with the first few verses of the book of Genesis. 
Why is this? Because you have to see the facts. To be an atheist, to deny the fact there's a creator, you're actually denying the facts that are around you. There is a creator. Science is now pointing to such. You cannot use science as an excuse not to believe. If you actually follow science, you must point to the very one it's pointing to, the creator. He is the one who created heaven and earth. He can make a difference in your life. He's got the power for your life. The one who created something out of nothing can make a difference in your life. You think you're a nothing? Perfect candidate. He can make something out of you. This is what God can do. He's the great God. Creators are might Give him praise. I don't care if it's against your will. May his name be blessed forever. Creation is a reminder of his eternal redemption. Life was never meant to be properly lived apart from the creator of life and his redemption, his power to create anything. His power to create anything from nothing is his power to redeem anyone from anything. I'm not going to go too far. I got a lot more to say on it, but I'm going to cut myself off because I'm looking at the clock on the back there. And I know you all want your own egg. But I'm going to say something anyway. If he's a God, if there is a God, what will you permit him to create? Will you permit him to create, to create rocks? Or is he limited to mud? Because if you permit the fact that there's a God who could create a rock, and if you were then at that point of creation to have that rock and you were to test it, you probably would say it was made 50 million years ago. Because it's a rock, it's not mud. But he could create a rock. Understand you're limiting God if you don't accept the fact that he is the creator of the universe. You say, but the stars, they're 50 billion light years away. I know, what a great God. But didn't it take 50 billion years for the light to come here? No, he's God. He created the star and the light. He did the whole package deal for you. So understand he's God. He is the creator of the universe. And science points to it. To deny it is to be once more out of touch with reality. And so remember the mountains, only reminders are here to speak of his faithfulness. The mountains one day will be removed, but his faithfulness is everlasting because he loves us with an everlasting love. He'll never give up on you, never give up on you. He loves you. And so he's faithful as well. Uh, he is your security. It's like verse 3 to 6. He's our security. He's the creator, therefore he's the keeper. Trust your keeper and chill. And so it says here, your foot will not, he won't let your foot slip. He will keep you. He who keeps you will never slumber or sleep. He will keep you. He's our assurance. How do I ascend? How do I press on to the mark of an upper calling? How do I do this? It's because of what he brings to the table. Not only the power to do it, but the protection while you're doing it. He'll never leave you. He's there for you. He's there with your family. He's there with your children. He's there for you. Understand these issues. He promises victory, but he didn't say there wouldn't be casualties. He said there'd be victory. He didn't say there wouldn't be casualties. We press on to this mark. We press on. And so he keeps you. He cannot fail you. You say, but I'm, I'm the kind of person, you know, I'm a little unsteady on my feet. Uh, what happens if I slip slide away here? He'll remain faithful. It says in Psalm 94, 18, read Psalm 94 at the bottom of the screen. Let's read it together. Here we go. If I should say my foot has slipped, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Press on to the mark with confidence in him, in him, who he is, what he brings to the table. He did not redeem you by his grace to lose you by a misstep. His finished work secures your salvation as we studied before. Your full salvation, justification, you're declared righteous in the Lord. Sanctification, you're a saint in the Lord. His glorification to come, we're going to spend all eternity with him in glory. 
What a great God to him. Read with me, therefore, what our response be, should, should be to him. From Jude one let let's read the bottom. Here we go. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory. May his name be blessed and praised forever. He is able. This is where our focus is. Not on our ability, on his ability. I can do all things through Messiah who strengthens me. I can do everything he called me to do through the Messiah. This is what I have to go up that mountain, to live out that life, to press to the mark of our high calling in Yeshua the Messiah. And so therefore he says, uh, he who keeps you not slumber asleep, behold, behold, check this out. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber or sleep. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. And so let's understand where our hope is when a war is taking place. Will there be casualties? War has casualties. Will there be victory? God's promises are absolutely true and amen. You can count on the fact, Am Yisrael Chai. This is the visible testimony that we need to understand. And not only for ourselves, but for everyone else. Am Yisrael Chai. The people of Israel live. This is a testimony. The glory of God. And let me tell you why this is so important. Why God chose Israel. Remember, we looked at the promises that were made, that through Abraham, through the seed, the Messiah, all the nations of the earth would be blessed. You understand that if he can keep Israel, he can keep you? He's testifying, therefore. But if you deny his faithfulness to keep Israel, you will doubt his faithfulness to keep you. If you deny his faithfulness to keep Israel, you will doubt his faithfulness to keep you in season, out of season, whatever is going on here. You say, well, what do you mean? He keeps Israel in Messiah. Listen, so the nations will know that Yeshua can keep them as well. You say, what? God wants Palestinians to be saved. God wants everyone to be saved. He does, does not desire the death of the wicked. Desires to repent and live. No matter how wicked they are, he wants them to repent and they may live because the death of Yeshua, the sacrifice of Yeshua, is sufficient for any sin. So we need to pray accordingly, but understand the issues. God wants the nations to be saved. He uses Israel as a demonstration model. And therefore, we want to understand God wants the nation to be saved. But the very one who wants to destroy Israel wants to destroy the nations. And the demonic forces that are coming against Israel have nothing to do with Israel has to do with the rebellion against God. And that same one who's looking to destroy Israel will want to destroy the nations as well. The very people who think they fight for a cause are going to find themselves with a rug pulled out from under them as the, as the enemy of God wants to destroy them as well. And so we therefore pray for the peace of Jerusalem that we might therefore believe God for peace for this world. Because the issue of peace is in the Prince of Peace, the Messiah of Israel. And therefore, God is on his throne doing his work. And tr we trust him for this work. And God loves everybody. He loves everyone the same. God is love. And so we need to, we need to love everyone the same, Jew and non-Jew alike. This is the calling that God has upon all of our lives, our community, and our families as well. As a creation-making God, is covenant-keeping God. We ascend by trusting in his faithfulness, not our own. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He's not asleep. Therefore, you can go to sleep. As I see some of you are taking me up on that, even, <laughs> even as I speak. Rightly so. It's your freedom in this country. You can sleep through any message. God bless you. And so Adonai is your keeper. Shade in your right hand. Our, our creator is our keeper. If he's not your creator, he's not your keeper. Understand where your security lies on the one whose grace is sufficient for you. His power is, is beyond comprehension. And so it says there uh, that he keeps us. His shade is our shelter. 
as we see there, no condemnation of Messiah. I just love the fact that he is my, it says there, Adonai is your shade on your right hand. What does that mean? Shade on my right hand. He is standing so close to you, he's blocking the sun. He is so, he'll never leave you and never forsake you. He's the shade in that he's blocking, you know, in the Middle East there, the sun, it says, will smite you by day. I mean, what does that mean? Well, in the Middle East there, that's pretty rugged sun, just saying. And that could therefore give you sunstroke in a matter of minutes. And so you need shade. You need protection in the Middle East. Who is your protection? He is your shade. He's standing so close to you that nothing can get to you but by his permission. Because God will never leave you. He's there at your right hand. He's there with your family. He is the shade. He is the protection. There is no condemnation to those in Messiah Yeshua. Therefore, the finished work of Messiah is the guarantee. He is is your shade, he is your protector, he is your provision, all that you need. And so we want to understand here, Yeshua's witness protection program, why we share him. Uh, for, for you have been a defense for the helpless, a shade from the heat. Yeshua's witness protection program, you said, rather do things my own way. Your witless protection program, where you think ignoring reality, la, 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 la. We don't ignore reality. We don't ignore Goliath. We see someone bigger than Goliath. We don't ignore it. We see someone bigger than the problem. It's not that we're not recognizing the issues. We recognize it. But there is a God who's greater than all. He conquered death. And therefore, our hope and our confidence is in him. And that's how God called us to live this life. Eternally secure both day and night in his promise and in his presence there. And so we will not be afraid of the terror by night. If you have night terrors, don't count sheep. Talk to the shepherd. He loves you. Adonai is your keeper. Adonai is your shade on your right hand, as we've seen here. He's the one who protects you. 24-7, 365 he never leaves you. He loves you. He loves you forever. And your home is there for a safe haven when he's the Lord of your home. And so if your focus is your focus, faith in Yeshua or fear of others, it's always one or the others. It's always the, either your, your faith is in him or you're fearing someone else. This is where the problem lies. Look to him. He is your refuge and your strength. Why aren't we ascending no faith in Israel and your security? He's a keeper. He's not a sleeper. He's on his game. You can trust in him. Trust in him. He gives us eternal life. We will never perish. Do you believe him? That's really the question. Do you trust in this God? Do you trust in the God who made these promises, who says to us, I give them eternal life and they'll never perish. No one will snatch us out of his hand. Do you believe? You have to trust in him. Understand that's the key for living this life because he has not called us to a battle-less existence but to have victory, to press to the mark of our high calling accordingly. And so finally now we want to understand as the eternal one, he's the certainty of eternal life. He says here in verse 7, Adonai will keep you from all evil. How much evil? Keep that in mind. He'll keep you, he will keep your soul. Adonai will guard your going out, your coming in from now and forever. All the promises of God, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. All the promises of God are yes in the Messiah. His finished work is the guarantee, the sub, he's the substance of everything. He's the one that gives substance to the promises. His death for our sins, his resurrection, which proved his death was accepted as our atonement. And therefore, we have a guarantee in the Messiah himself that these promises are all amen and true. And so let's understand he spiritually keeps us secure through all the whatevers. I want you to notice I have a, a outlined up there, all evil, your soul. What does that mean? He's not going to keep you from every problem. He's going to keep you from every evil. What? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I fear no evil. He will keep you from every evil. Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. He's with me, that's why. The evil cannot affect you. You may have problems, you may have difficulties, but remember you've been called to a spiritual victory. To live for the Lord in the midst of it all. To be a testimony in all your situations. You say, well, what about that unprayed for hospital ministry? Yes, well, God has an opportunity there. I wasn't very happy, went to the doctor recently. Every single person I talked to already knew the Lord. What a wasted trip that was. <laughs> right? What a waste of time. But nonetheless, a one person said they'd come visit our congregation. Well, praise the Lord, okay. <laughs> but nonetheless, understand, through whatever the situation may be, whatever difficulty it may be, whatever trial you're going through, he will guard you through every trial. And if he can guard you from the least detail, any detail whatsoever, if he can guard you from any detail, then he can guard you from Goliath. It's all the same to him. Everything is less than dust on the scales. All the nations of the world, less than dust on the scales. God is greater than all. And therefore, you say, well, well this guy here, and my dear brother Ari over there would testify the same thing. Get to know that man, uh, Ari. Uh, you say, why? Because he's a living testimony. As this guy I have up here in a wheelchair, he, he was happy. Everyone said, why are you so happy about it? He said, because the physical problem didn't affect my heart. And it never will. God's guarding his heart. That's what's going on here. In the midst of the trial, in the midst of the difficulty, we have a testimony to share of a God who never leaves us, never forsakes us. For we know no temptation has overtaken you except that which is common to a person. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with every temptation will also make a way of escape so that you may be able to endure it, to bear it, to get through it victoriously, sharing the Lord with the whomsoever that God has in your way. Not only all evil, but wherever you're going the same way, he faithfully keeps us secure through all the wherevers, going out, coming in, whatever, wherever the Lord has you, he's already there. Isn't that true? Wherever you're going, the Lord is already there. He's omnipresent. He's God. He's everywhere at once. He understands these issues. And so he can guard you here, guard you there. If he can guard you anywhere, you say, well, I feel safest at home. Why? Because you think you control the security system? Because you think you can control the lock on the door? There are thieves, there are robbers who are smarter than you. Beware of your arrogance, trusting in your own devices. I'm not saying that you should live recklessly. I'm saying that your confidence needs to be in the Lord. That's where your faith is. That he'll bless the work of your hands uh, as, he, as he desires to do. And you'll honor him. Because he can guard you anywhere. He can guard you everywhere. That's the point of it. Wherever, therefore, when you're at home, at school, wherever you may be, when you're working or traveling, whatever it may be, his Emmanuel, God, is with us. Therefore, these are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. Are you willing to follow the Lamb wherever he goes? Or are you saying, I don't know. I don't know. Do they have air conditioning? You know? I don't think the lamb would go with there's no air conditioning, right? Don't you think? Let's take a vote on that. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. Uh, will I be able to fly uh, first class? I don't know. Would, would the lamb go second class? <laughs> so some of us have very strange ideas about life, but God has called us to a victory in this life. And so as the psalmist says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? Nowhere. Because he is God. He's already there. Trust him wherever God would have you to go. And there also we want to understand this promise. We must understand this promise. I have to go a little bit profound on you now. Forgive me. Uh, I want you to notice the scriptures on the left side of the screen. Let's read the left side of the screen. Here we go. 
For those who obey all of his vote, blessed shall you be when you come and bless when you go out. But for those who disobey any mitzvot, cursed shall you be when you come in, and cursed shall you be. You see, all of this, including the Psalms, were all written under the Mosaic Torah, over the jurisdiction of the Mosaic Mount Sinai Covenant. And therefore, in order to have blessings, you need to have perfect obedience. According to Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 and 2, take a look at it on your own. Take a look, please. Please know what the Word of God says. And so if you have perfect obedience, you, you, you obey the Word fully, completely, therefore you'll be blessed when you're coming and going. And what if you don't obey when you're coming and going? Verse 15 says all these curses will come upon you. be cursed in your coming and going out as well. You say, I don't understand. Then how could the psalmist, how could the psalmist properly, properly write uh, that he will actually guard my going out and coming in? It's because he's looking to the Lord, not himself. Because he's looking to what the Lord could do in the Messiah. He had a messianic anticipation. As did Abraham. Abraham was glad to see Yeshua's day. As Moses, he was looking to the reward. Understand they had a messianic anticipation. Their hope was not in themselves. What they could do. No. Their hope was in the Messiah. In the sacrificial system. Therefore they all lived dependent on the bloody sacrifices. In order to have any assurance for any blessing. Uh, because they all sinned. Every one of them sinned. So only in Messiah. That anticipated Messiah's perfect sacrifice. There is any. This is where our personal assurance of his blessing is found. In his sacrifice. As Messiah's sacrifice secures Israel's lasting security. So it will likewise secure you by faith as well. But with disobedience, expect there will be a chastening, even a severe chastening. If there is disobedience, just to correct you, to get your attention, but understand that as a believer. If you're not a believer, beware. It says there's no condemnation for those who are in Messiah, but if you're outside the Messiah, there's nothing but condemnation. Repent now. Trust in him now, I beg of you. And so finally it says eternally, he eternally keeps us secure through all the where, whenevers. Not only the whatever is all evil, not only the wherever is going out and coming in, but also in the whenever is from now and forever. From now and forever. Let's understand this issue here. Yeshua said, I'm with you always. He can guard you. If he can guard you for one minute, do you believe he can guard you for one minute? If he can guard you for one minute, he can guard you forever. It's all the same to him. He's an eternal God. One minute. Will you give him a minute? Will you trust in him for a minute? Trust in him now. You say, I haven't done it. Trust in him. Place your faith in him. And he will guard you now and forever. Because he'll never leave you or forsake you. So you may be thinking, if I'm so secure in the whatever, wherever, and whenever, and why do I have so many problems in this life? Why are there so many problems? Why do I have so many services? Why? 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 It's because you have to understand sheep. All we like sheep have gone astray. Sheep get so many parasites in the wool, they have to go through a sheep dip to cleanse them. The master of the sheep dip. You say, I never wanted to, I didn't grow up wanting to be the master of the sheep dip. Kind of sounds nasty. Great job. Master of the sheep dip has to make sure that the sheep dip is strong enough to kill the parasites, but not so strong that it'll harm the sheep. All the issues, the problems you're going through, all of them are a sheep dip because Yeshua is the master of the sheep dip. Trust him to work all things together for good. All the issues you're going through, all the problems you're going through, all of them have a purpose that you'll recognize all those things. Be cleansed of them in the blood of Yeshua. Be cleansed of all those issues. And therefore be cleansed and therefore enjoying the grace of God as you follow him now and forever. His all-sufficient grace, this is your security in him now and forever. And so if he guards you going out, he'll guard you coming in. If he guards you now, he'll guard you forever. If you fear the future without him, you are fearing the present without him. 
because it's the same now as it is forever. If you have a fear of the future, it's because you're not trusting him now. Trust him now to secure the future because it's now and forever. It's a package deal that way. And so let's understand if you're not trusting him, it's not the future that's your problem. It's facing life without the only God who can protect you and provide for you and secure you. That's where the problem lies. Trust in him now, for now is the day of salvation. Now and forever, trust in him now. And so Messiah's perfect work is my perfect trust and eternal hope. That's the truth of the scripture, this portion in particular. We ascend trusting in his securing work and certain work. Well, whoever he saves, he secures. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the author and finisher. What he authored, he will finish. He's the author and the finisher. He's not one or the other. It's a both and. If he authored it, he will finish it. If he saves you, he will secure you. This is the truth of who God is and what he wants to be in your life and through your life. And so the question is, are you trusting in him now? Are you trusting in him now? Because now we're going to pray and ask the Lord to make a big deal of difference in our life and through our life to the lives of others. Wherever you may be, wherever he may be sending you, whether it be Atlanta, Cyprus, same old God, same everywhere. Father, we do pray your blessing upon our hearts, our homes, and our community. We pray that that blessing may bring great praise to that name that's above every name. And Lord, there may be some of us here uh, this morning, and maybe some who are live streaming with us, who have not, in the overflow, whoever they may be, who have not yet personally trusted in him. And now they have to make that decision to secure their forever, to have peace now, sufficiency now, provision now, protection now, all that he provides now. And so now, let's yield our heart to him. If you're here and you haven't trusted in him yet for salvation, for forgiveness and new life, it's a package deal. He has it all for you in Messiah. If you just trust in Yeshua the Messiah, if you already trusted in him but you've forgotten about him, you've taken your eyes off of him, you've given yourself over to fear and worry, repent of that. Turn your attention back to Yeshua. Place your faith in him for cleansing and provision you need. Whatever your need is, he hears your heart. Pray with me in your heart this simple prayer. Dear God, forgive me for my doubts. Forgive me for my fears. Forgive me for my arrogance. Cleanse my sins away through the blood of Yeshua. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for securing me now and forever. And while every eye is closed, everyone else's eyes are closed, I want to pray for you right where you are. If you prayed that prayer this morning to place your faith in the Messiah, right where you're seated, if you made that decision of faith, you trust, placed your faith in Yeshua, right where you are, I want to pray for you right where you are. Just raise your hand once. Everyone else's eyes are shut. Just lift your hand just once so I can pray for you right where you are. Right where you're seated, just raise your hand once. There you are. Praise the Lord. Right where you are. Yep. Yep. Yes, ma'am. I see your hand. Yes. Anyone else? Just raise your hand. Yes. Yes, sir. I see your hand. Anyone else? Right. Yes. Yes, I see your hand as well. Praise the Lord. Right where you're seated. It makes no difference if people think you're already a believer. Don't worry about the opinion of others. 
look to the Lord right where you are. Just raise your hand right where you are so I can pray for you right where you're seated. Father, you see hands, you see hearts. Lord, you know us and you love us. Thank you, Lord. And now we pray that you will confirm to our hearts not only the truth of your love, but the fullness of our salvation, a now and forever salvation. A salvation that's not based on the whatevers, the wherevers or the whenevers, or the whoevers, but based upon what you have done for us in Messiah. Thank you for giving us a life of victory and confidence. And even so, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. In Yeshua's name, amen and amen.